Hey everyone, welcome to Keep Shooting Monday number 97. My name is Greg Cazillo from Cazillo.com. I'm Catherine Azar from Catherine Azar Photography. So we have the seven weeks of a Christmas photo contest going on right now. We have some huge prizes, a 3880 printer from Epson, an R2000 printer from Epson, and a really awesome Think Tank Airport security. Thank you to all of those guys for giving us those prizes. And we have one to give away we this do, week. the Shelfie from Simply Color Lab. So uh, who was it that won that? We already chose the winner of that. You happen to remember the name? Quigley. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it's a cool name. So here's a couple of his photos that he had posted. Um, love the photos. Looks like he has a little bit too much Photoshop on this image. It's, oh, would you um, stop? Sorry. I you know like how it. I have it. Oh, I I'm know. not saying it's not good. But I think it's got just a touch too much Photoshop. So anyway, the other ones are really cool. And you know what? I'd like to see that one in all black and white. The one with the rays coming through. Yeah, or maybe not if it's not all black and white. Maybe if it just had a little bit, uh, just a, a single tone, just a monotone okay. image. Maybe all blue or all warm tones. Uh, I think it might be interesting. So um, yeah. Quigley. We're digging him, Quigley. We did your name. Is that really your first name? You have to let us know because I love it. Yep. So cool Quigley three Jones. three images he submitted. He won the shelfie and he'll be able to get them printed. And you know what? He doesn't have to order those three if he doesn't want to. Correct. He or can he can get those else. as a replacement pack down the road yep. if he wanted. Absolutely. So, um, so on what is this week's this giveaway? Week, another one of my favorite companies. You have all, if you've watched the show, heard me talk about the organic bloom, and you have to put the V or the, depending upon how you want to pronounce it, in front of it if you look them up online. Love, love, love their frames. Totally my style. I have some of them in my house going up my staircase, interspersed with letters and cool other things. I'm going to have a ton of them in my studio. So the organic bloom. Um, lots of different styles. You can do all sorts of things with them. I actually won this at a conference that I went to where nice. I actually met Andrea, who's one of the owners. Um, and I love the fact that it was this color because it matched my branding. So I framed my logo. So you can do that as well. Um, lots of different styles. Some of them are double mounted like this. This is the one we used at the, as a teaser for the beginning. This is not mm -hmm. one of the ones you win. <laughs> Those are here and I'll explain why we have them packaged in a second. But from the back, you can also see how well constructed they are. They are super sturdy, heavy mm -hmm. frames. Love them. And uh, you know what? Show the back of that real quick just to educate. Mm -hmm. I would suggest instead of what everybody does is bend these little tabs over, I would suggest going and buying a new staple gun for this rather than just bending, bending them over. Number one, bending is harder on your, your fingers. Your fingers. Um, so in my opinion, I would, I would pull them out with a pair of pliers and then when you go to put your picture in, just uh, staple the new one in. And I told you I have a staple remover that's a long one that has one of those little things that you slide under. Mm -hmm. I use those to bend them back yeah. and then bend them back down because then I don't have to hurt my I don't my know fingers. how well they're going to last by bending back and forth all the time. And so that's why I think you'd be better off with, uh, I know you're better off with just pulling them out. Yeah, it's a shocker. So. You have an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. You also can order, oh, let me explain this too. You have to be a preferred vendor okay. to be to sell these or to get them. So if you are not a pro but would like to get an organic bloom frame, you can go on their website and do their vendor locator and find someone in your town who sells organic bloom frames. If you are a pro and would like to sell them, you just submit your information and they can approve you and then you'll be good to go. Um, and when you are good to go, you can also order a sample kit, which comes with a couple of different things. This whole ring, if you want to travel light, of all the different colors that they okay. offer, which is super cool. And the actual blocks. You make noise with it. I know. It's like a little baby toy. Yeah, it um, is. They, they have a really cool um, little bin now, wooden bin, that you can buy to put these in, which I will get to at some point. But these little blocks are actual pieces of molding. And I love these because when I go to clients' homes, I can hold them up against their wall mm -hmm. and help them see what it'll look like on their wall, which I have done. They have all these cutesy names like yellow, apple, and mint, and sun-kissed, and buttercup. Get it? That organic <laughs> bloom. So... <laughs> company is blooming. They also so why don't we have this big thing on our table here? 
You have these two that you can just play frames with. Cool. I, I wanted to bring the packaging in to show you how well they're packaged too. Because so often I've ordered things nowadays in the mail and they come to me and the box is shredded mm -hmm. and something's dented. I've this... ordered sheets of paper that have come dented and screwed up, so yeah. I know what you mean. So, and I've gotten a lot of that recently, but I have never once gotten anything from this company that's been damaged in any way. Mm -hmm. Comes in the big box with another piece of uh, Whatever. What is this? Cardboard. Cardboard? On top of it. <laughs> Are you sure that's cardboard? Yes, cardboard. <laughs> and then it's super well taped down, uh, so it's not going anywhere. So it's come pretty well secured. So in order to... So what do they win? The, these. Okay. So can you You're give me... you going to open it with your sharp finger? I probably could. Okay. <laughs> but Here, don't Greg's cut yourself. Greg's going to give me, give me his knife. Don't cut yourself, please. I'm a little scared. On the show. We're going to be see Kathy <laughs> bleeding on the show. On the show. So uh, last week, uh, or maybe it was two weeks ago, someone asked us, man, you're making a lot of I noise. I know. That's why I said you ought to be quiet. Just wait till <laughs> I'm okay. finished with this. Uh, someone asked on the show uh, about how we got our start. And so you see you're almost on. It's fine. Mm -hmm. So... Um, how I got my start was uh, at uh, in high school. I had a teacher. His name was Mr. Moyer. It was tenth or eleventh grade visual communications class that I was taking at the time, and you're gonna break that. I am not gonna break it. <laughs> See? And, uh, and the 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 teacher he just basically let me take a ton of photos and just keep doing photos rather than anything else. Rather than the, they had a printing press in the class and they had desktop publishing with like the Mac 2Es, <laughs> <laughs> which was a couple years ago. I think it was a 2E. I'll put a picture of it up anyway. I it was, predate you, it so. Was, oh, I know. But still, it seemed, still seems old and, you know, mm. forever ago. Uh, anyway, from that point, uh, I kept, again, I was just doing the photography. They had a black room, white, dark room. They had one of those huge line cameras for doesn't matter. Nobody's going to know what a line mm -hmm. camera is anyway now that I think about it. And uh, then I worked at a photography uh, or a camera store for a couple of years. And then from the photography school, I went and worked for a portrait and wedding photographer who, it's funny, I still have the same cadence and use the same cadence as he does. Huh? Like one of the way I count down before I take a picture and that kind of thing when I'm oh, shooting a portrait. Okay. Gotcha. I still use that same cadence and do it all the time. And so yeah, that was that was his thing, and I also think a lot of my attention to detail came with from them. So, for example, hands posing, legs cutting mm -hmm. off feet, you know, framing that kind of thing. I know that it, that it came from them, and then from there, I worked for them for like two years or so. Then I went to Antonelli, and the rest is history. So that's my start. Excellent. And how about you? Was there anything else you want to mention about these? Yeah, just before we get into yours. Here we go. So this, I'm check just checking the name of them. This is the Audrey French Vanilla with the three um, openings. They do have multiple opening frames, so you can check those out on. Okay, your website so in other words, well. I can order that setup with the same outside and a different color. Is that what you're telling me? Yes. Oh okay. yeah. All, you All can order just about any yeah any color that you want. Okay. So that's a cool one, and this is one of my favorite frame styles, which is called the Andy White, in white, and uh, all of their colors are really nice. But I get, okay. I get it's really cool, fun thing. So whatever your decor, you can match it. Although we said last week, you don't have to match your decor. Match yes. your picture. The, the picture to the frame. You yes. can do it, whichever floats your boat. Very good. Well, that's nice stuff. So how did you get started? I, so I know the I answer started? or most of the answer to that question. But. You do. Um, I have always loved photography ever since I was little. I think we talked about me playing with my mother's flash bulbs and, and yep. all that. Um, and it became quickly evident that my mother was not um, the best photographer in the world. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> okay. It's kind of a family joke, actually. So yep. I very quickly became the family photographer. And then after my kids, I actually started scrapbooking before my kids were born. And then after my kids were born, um, it was a joke that my kids were going to be the best documented kids in all of history <laughs> because I took so yeah. many pictures with film because at the time it was uh, film. Okay. Um, digital wasn't, wasn't out yet. <laughs> I'm dating myself. Um, and well, I started, oh, that's something I didn't mention is the first camera. Yeah. My first camera was actually a Canon AE-1. For real? For real. That was my first camera. And actually, the way I paid for that camera was I worked for a family friend helping them for the summer 
work on around their house and help build a deck and that kind of thing. Oh, that's, that's great. That's how I paid for my first camera. So, well, mine was, <laughs> I actually looked at, I'm working on a blog post as we speak okay. um, on how like my journey through for, for photography. Yep. And mine, I can't remember the name of it, but it was a Kodak that you flipped the outside over and then that stick became the handle. Yep. And then you went like this and then took We're the We're going to have to find out what the name was of I that I have it. I found some online. Did you? Um, okay. So, the, and they're called a vintage camera. <laughs> I forgot uh, the term vintage. Is that like 20 years? Or oh, it's well over 20 years, years, I'm sure. It's from the 80s, <laughs> I think, early 80s. Um, and then at some point I had a Minolta talker that would talk to you. If your film was empty, really? it would say, load film now. <laughs> I'm with the remarkable new Minolta talker. When the light's too dim, it talks to you. Too dark, use flash. When you're out of flash range, it tells you. Check distance. And when the camera's empty? Load film. It's the auto exposure, auto focus, 35 millimeter camera that loads, advances, and rewinds the film all automatically. The new Minolta Talker talks you into good pictures. Great pictures. Only from the mind of Minolta. And then I moved on to a Nikon film camera, and then my first digital was an Nikon because I could swap out the lenses, mm -hmm. and so that's why I stuck with Nikon. Um, and how I actually got into the business, I was taking a lot of pictures for sports. You know how that's, mm -hmm. I've, do, I've done a lot of those. And then neighbors would start asking me, can you do our Christmas picture? And people started saying, we need to pay you for this. And most of you know, if you've watched the show at all, I used to be a former school teacher. And um, I thought I'd go back to teaching full time once yep. my son was full time in school. But at that point, uh, my daughter developed a really serious kidney disease, which she's still fighting to this day. And there's no way I could have gone back to a full time job. So mm -hmm. when God closes a door, I believe he opens a window. And I started really thinking about it full time. And then when my my sister was continuing to push me in this direction, mm -hmm. I thought, I. That'd be great. I'd love to do this, but I can't go take someone's picture on auto, so I need to know what I'm doing. <laughs> and that's when I signed up for some classes through Mainline School, School Night, Night yeah. um, with Greg. Didn't know him at the time, <laughs> and we uh, I took a couple of classes with you, mm -hmm. and then I had a question on a photo shoot I had done. So I think I emailed you, and you said too complicated, call me, and I called him, and then he had a question for me. It's funny, I don't remember that though. Yeah, it was <laughs> it doesn't matter. It was on a headshot, and then you said I have a question for you too, as a fledgling professional photographer mm -hmm. and then I ended up editing an ebook for you yes, and then that's right. from there you asked yep. if I wanted to come second shoot one of Bridget's horse shows mm -hmm. and then from there it's kind of history yep. yeah yeah exactly cool so uh, the question of the week this week is how did you guys get your start what was your first camera any kind of weird quirky things so um, and yeah, even if you're like not a pro, it. how did you get started shooting? Why are you interested in photography? Yep. Did and someone? It, and it's okay to admit that your favorite camera is an iPhone or something like that. Yeah, you know, we, there are a lot of. We those. won't hold it against you. We won't block you or anything like that. <laughs> that's right. They're getting better. <laughs> so um, yeah, so that's uh, that's kind of how we started. One of the questions that someone had asked. So and you know what? we're jumping around a little bit, but we didn't mention how do you win one of these beauties? Oh yes. Submit a photo, and I was thinking about this. I think we need to allow someone to resubmit if they've already submitted a photo from like two weeks ago or last week. You know what I mean? Submit your photo again, tweet your photo again, or put it post it on Facebook again, and we'll let you try and win this uh, organic bloom frame, one of the two frames that Kathy showed you. And uh, so yeah, that'll be cool. That'll be your your submission for the week. So uh, I have this box that I've been playing with here. Someone sent it over. He just wants to use his knife. So I'm gonna cut it open and it is sent oh, from- Oh, you don't cut towards you. That's what happens when you know how to use a knife. <laughs> Mom. <laughs> so uh, anyway, this is sent over by Tether Tools and I just wanted to give an initial reaction on their stuff. Um, they sent over a couple of pieces here, and, and that's just packaging. We're gonna throw that out of the frame and let it make a lot of noise. Wow, that's heavy. So this is, what do they call it? They call it their Rock Solid Master Articulating Arm. Look how heavy that is. Wow, that is heavy. It's like a lot it. heavier than I expected it to be. And it's probably, yeah about two or three times the weight of the other arm that I have there mm -hmm. from, actually I have two different arms. This is probably double the weight of the one that I have 
from Manfrotto and at least double the weight of another one that's a, an aftermarket company that uh, I have. But anyway, it's supposed to be, I don't know what the weight is on this, but I know you can put like a lot of weight on it. Here, let's try. <laughs> Ooh, I think I broke it. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's, I'm putting a lot of weight on that. So yeah, that's a, that's a real nice heavy unit. And you can, it's got two different size screws. So you got a quarter 20 there, you got a three eighths there. So basically you can mount anything on this, like an iPad or uh, a camera, whatever, and it'll hold it up straighter at whatever angle you need it to. So that's what that arm is for. Yeah, I was gonna say, what would you use it for, for someone who yep. looks at that and goes, that's a nice piece of black metal. You can mount it to all kinds of stuff. And that guy is the arrow tab that we talked about in our video a while back. Greg has been so excited about this. <laughs> Greg doesn't get excited about much, but and he's been thing, exciting about, yep. excited about this. This is a tablet mount. And so you can put pretty much any tablet in it and it will just work. <laughs> so the thing I like about it is, is that you can actually put the tablet in here still in the case. It should fit tablet and case inside of this for most of your of your tablets. And uh, so yeah, you can mount this, put your tablet in there, spin it closed, then you can mount it on a light stand, you can mount it on a quarter 20 or a 3 eighths. So you can put it on your tripod, again you put it on a light stand, or if you're using an articulating arm like this, I could just have it stand itself up just like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, which you can't see, but <laughs> I just there. like saying articulating arm. <laughs> yes. So, uh, so yeah, so I'm going to have a full review of those coming up soon. And uh, do you have any questions about those? Yeah. So what would you use this for in someone who's, for someone who's shooting? Would you use this, uh, like shoot tethered and have uh, the images come up on the iPad? If or? You, well, I'm working on a couple different things. Number one, uh, I'm hoping that I can find, I know there's a couple different ways to do this, basically to view the image from the camera on the iPad. I know there's a couple different ways to do that and I'm working As on As you're that. shooting tethered, you mean? Yes, shooting okay. tethered for like video, using it as an external monitor. Okay, okay. for video or for, for, video. for, shoot, for film? Um, for video. Okay. All right, so that's one way I know you can do it. Um, you can then just, you know, if you're, if you're using it for a shoot or using it for anything, whatever you need to hold that tablet up for, this is going to be a mount. And it's a rock solid mount, especially compared to the $20 one that I ordered that I'll be comparing this to uh, that I'd ordered on eBay that wasn't that great. But this one, yeah, it's definitely I can't solid. believe how solid that is. Funk, it'll tell you. Yeah, and how nice that is. So, yeah. So, I'll, again, I'll have a full review of that coming up soon. And, and I think uh, as part of the review, give people ideas on how they would use it. Yes, definitely. Definitely. You made me lose my train of thought, though. There was something else that I was going to bring up. So anyway. Question. Um, yes, we had. Oh, you know what we wanted to talk about? We wanted to talk about the, uh, the couple comments of what people oh, were yeah. going to talk about. And you were going to bring that up over there, too. Um, let me get this out of the way. I still can't believe how heavy that is. <laughs> no wonder the box was heavy. It was. And I'll have to get more specs on that, too, of what, what it's rated for. Yep. So we had some neat comments about what people do with their photos. And I, that's one of my big pushes, you know, is to get pictures yep. off of your computer. Always. Um, and onto your walls and to clients and, and to friends and relatives and whatnot. Um, so we had one of my favorites was the one... Um, when we, Adam White, when I lived in a shared house in uni, uni, I don't know what that is, we all printed self-portraits of ourselves, put them in cheap and simple wooden frames, and nailed them to our doors. Every time a new member joined the house, we gave them an empty wooden frame and a nail. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's great. U UNC? It says UNI. U uni. UNI, UNI, so it's probably like probably an abbreviation for some college. Let us know, Adam. Yep. Uh, one of the ones that I noticed was uh, I like giving out canvas wraps for photo gifts and uh, also says love your weekly videos. So that was cool. I like the idea of the canvas wrap. It's a little bit different. It's a it's a cool different kind of project. Well, I can't well, you're wait. You're printing to... that on your Epson printer. And I, I can't <laughs> wait to give the shelfie too yep. as, as gifts this Christmas. Um, old school and new, hello Greg and Kathy. I also did a photo project for my parents at the same time last year. My father had just been diagnosed with stage four melanoma. Oh. 
and I decided to scan, print, and frame his old Marine Corps photo. I also scanned and printed and framed my mother and mother's father and presented both. Whoops, read more. Read more. Sorry. To my mother for Christmas in a double frame that opens and can stand on its own on a table or fireplace. Organic bloom. Mm -hmm. um, the images were larger than originals and brought tears to my mother as soon as she opened the gift. Probably the most emotional gift I've ever given. Thanks again for the work and the help you give us all, Bill. Uh, that's the kind of stuff that I just love. Yep. My um, father-in-law was in Korea and had two Purple Hearts from mm -hmm. Korea as well as all of his bells and whistles, medals and stuff. Yep. And my sister-in-law had all of them framed mm -hmm. in a shadow box mm -hmm. and um, his one of his grandchildren was very close to him and was very interested in his career and she just on Facebook this week posted that her mother sent her that shadow box that my father-in-law had bequeathed to her mm -hmm. and she was so excited to get it so that stuff means a lot those memories are important even cool. though we're so digital yep. those tangible items hold lots of memories one comment that someone made last week uh, on the Easter egg from last week's show, if you didn't see it, go back and watch last week's show again. Uh, it was pretty funny, I thought. Anyway, <laughs> someone commented on that Easter egg and said, Greg, what's it like to work with a, such a stud? <laughs> or how, sorry, how did he word it? What's it really like to work with a stud? Great show. So David commented on that. Uh, I wanted to bring that up. Uh, Thank you very much. Let's just say that um, I don't <laughs> always think about the fact that the camera's rolling, and I say. And so. I, I try to leave it rolling more often now. <laughs> so uh, someone else had a question, and I'm trying to pull it up. Here we go. So um, I had no idea. Diego RD27. Hi, Greg. Can you help me with the size of the pictures ah. for printing? I converted raw files to JPEG format. What the resolution and size for the pictures? I'm using Lightroom 5. I think I made a mistake because my files are 80, 80 megabytes, megabytes per photo. Whoa. I watch your videos. Tell me what I've learned a lot. Thanks so much. So, uh, number one, it's going to make a difference whether you're printing in-house or whether you're printing uh, at a lab. So, first, let's talk about if you're doing it in-house. If you're doing it in-house on your own printer and you're printing with an Epson printer, they recommend that you export it at 270 PPI. And as far as image size, if you're printing directly from Lightroom, don't worry about the size of the image. Just print it directly from your raw file, don't export a JPEG, and you're done. If you do, however, need to edit the photo, what I would do is I would export the photo to a PSD file from Lightroom Edit the picture, but when you export it, export it at the native resolution of the original file. You're talking about a, uh, did you mention the camera? No, he doesn't say the, the kind of camera. But uh, for most cameras, you're going to be, have be fine at 12 megapixels or 15 or 20, whatever the camera is that you have. And so what I would do is just export it at the original size image, two, 270 PPI, and you'll be fine and you'll have a, you know, perfect image to then print, edit in Photoshop, and then print from Lightroom. See what I'm talking about? No, I'm very confused. <clears throat> You're exporting it as, as the original resolution. So it might be 4,000 pixels or 5,272 pixels, whatever it is. But why is he taking it, it from Lightroom, exporting it as a PSD? Why can't you just, when, when I work in Lightroom, I just edit in Lightroom, export it if as a JPEG. If he needs to edit it in Photoshop. Okay, well, let's say he you doesn't. Let's blemishes. say he just wants to... Edit in Lightroom. Well, yeah, then you just print. Then I just, or if you're sending it to your lab, export it as a JPEG and then send the Correct. JPEGs to your and lab. And that was my last thing that I was going to mention. When you're exporting to a JPEG, if you need to edit the image first, still edit, still go from a raw file, edit in Photoshop and a PSD, then bring it back into Lightroom and export from that PSD file to a JPEG file and send that JPEG to your lab. But why don't you give the, I know you do 4,000. Is it pixels on each yep. side? Yeah, most that of the you time export? for smaller prints, 4,000 is plenty. Um, you don't need to send them a really huge file if you're only printing 4x6s and 5x7s. Um, if you're, you know, you're talking about a six foot print, yeah, you probably should send them a little bit bigger image. Um, like what? 6,000, 5,000 image, 5,000 pixels on the long on side. side. If you, again, if they need it. The best thing to do is to ask your lab and find out what they'd want and go from there. Okay. If you know they might have a certain pixel requirement or a, P a PPI requirement uh, or a recommended file size, talk to your lab if you're sending it out to be sure that you're sending them the right thing. So my short answer for all of that mm -hmm. is 
set your settings, like you said, with the 4,000 yep. on the Sona side for Lightroom and export from there. Yep, and I'll, I'll write more, so write that out in. again with a couple, with three different scenarios and put it in the post in the description so okay. that you can, it's so a little bit easier Checking your to Lightroom follow. settings are the easiest way to Yep, yep, and uh, I'll put some other little screenshots in the video that, that should help you to do that, so. Did you miss anything? That was complicated. It's really not. All you gotta <laughs> do is ex your 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 format is is raw file to a PSD if you're editing. If you're not, just export it to a JPEG if you send it to the lab. If you're printing in-house, you just use the print module out of Lightroom and print it. See at there, now that was that was simple. <laughs> but there's still details in there that you need to go over. <laughs> details, details, details. It matters. <laughs> is that all? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks, guys. Keep shooting. See ya. See ya.